Hello, my name is Mariam Kilgati Bano, and in this demonstration, I want to show you how to perform a fluid flow simulation in a hospital room. In this demonstration, we will see two of ANSYS tools, Discovery Live and Fluent. Discovery Live is used to explore different design ideas very fast with instantaneous results. I will also show you ANSYS Fluent, which is a well-known CFD solver that is used to perform accurate fluid flow simulations. I will start off by showing you how to perform a fluid thermal simulation in Discovery Life. In the hospital room that I'm modeling, there is a patient lying down on a bed, a doctor standing by the patient, an equipment and a lamp, both generating heat, one ventilation inlet and one ventilation exhaust. In this part of the demo, I will compare two ventilation exhaust design with two different locations, one on the wall facing the bed, as you can see on the left hand side, and one on the roof, as you can see on the right hand side. In my simulation, I will also take into account the heat flux generated by the patient and the doctor. My goal here is to see which design has a smaller recirculation zone. Whichever design I find better, I choose for further analysis in Fluent. After bringing my selected design in Fluent, I start off by performing a steady state simulation using the same simulation input I used in Discovery Life. In this part of the simulation, I'd like to gain more insight into the airflow in the room. I'm interested to know where the re recirculation zones are, so I can later optimize the room ventilation further. Also, I want to evaluate the thermal comfort experienced by the patient. Reducing the spreading of bacteria and viruses through effective ventilation is very important in hospitals. Therefore, I will take this demo one step further and will show you how to perform a transient simulation of a patient coughing. I assume that the coughing material is liquid water droplet. The person coughing lasts 0.5 seconds, which releases 200,000 particles, and the cough flow velocity is 10 meter per second. Before jumping into a detailed demonstration, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to show you the workflow. I have already brought in my geometry in Discovery Life and have applied the boundary conditions of ventilation mass flow rate and heat fluxes. You notice that as soon as I click on the play button, I can see the simulation results. It's very easy to modify the geometry in Discovery Life and see the changes in the results. For example, here I'm going to change the location of the exhaust. As soon as I apply this location, you can see that Discovery Life updates the results and I can see the changes in the results. After investigating my design in Discovery Life, I save the geometry and bring it into Fluent. To perform a fluid flow simulation in Fluent, we need to start by creating a mesh grid. A mesh is basically discretizing the fluid flow domain into several elements for the solver to solve the fluid flow equations. Fluent can create a high quality mesh with minimum manual effort. I have already created a mesh grid here. And later I will explain this process in more details. Once the mesh is generated, I switch to solution to set up boundary conditions and solve. Once in Fluent, I set up the solver settings, models, material and boundary conditions and solve. Here I have already done all these steps. Once the calculation is done, you can investigate the results in Fluent using contour plots, vector plots, streamlines and more. For example, here, I have plotted velocity contours and vectors to see the flow in the hospital room and around the patient. Okay, now let's get to the detailed demo. I have already imported my hospital room geometry into Discovery Life. Here I start by creating a solution for the fluid flow. My geometry is the geometry of fluid volume, so I don't need to create the fluid volume. I select the bodies. Now I select the bodies that I want to include in my simulation. It's going to be this one here. And also I want to include this body, which is the ventilation exhaust for design one. 
then I complete the tool guide. This creates me a solution with air as the material. Then I'm going to apply the boundary conditions. So from setup, mass flow rate, I'm going to apply a mass flow rate of 0.18 kilogram per second. Then I'm going to apply an outlet pressure of 0 Pascal. Then I'm going to apply the heat fluxes. So from setup, thermal, heat flux. I start by applying the heat flux of the body of the doctor, 60 watt per meter square. Same thing for the patient. Then the equipment has a heat flux of 100 watt per meter square and the light heat flux of 200 watt per meter square. And lastly, I'm going to apply gravity to take into account the natural convection effects. I just need to modify the direction of the gravity. Once I'm done with this, I can click on play. And you notice that as soon as I click on play, I can see some simulation results. I can see the airflow coming into the hospital room from the ventilation inlet. Also, I can see the flow around the equipment, the body of the doctor and the patient going upward because of natural convection effects. We can also use other tools to investigate the flow. As you can see, there isn't much airflow circulation to the left side of the patient. I'm not very happy with the current location of the ventilation exhaust. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and try design 2, see if uh, that can improve the circulation. So for that, I remove the outlet design 1 body from the simulation. And instead, I add the one for design 2. Also, I need to modify the location of pressure outlet. Once again, I play the simulation. This time again, I can see the uh, flow around the body of the patient and the doctor moving upward because of natural convection. Also, what I can do here is to create a calculator for that. I click on the create calculator here. Let's say I want to look at the velocity around the body of the patient. For that, I change the location type to plan or surface, select, and I'm going to select the face of a body that I have created around the patient only for visualizing the results. Okay, there seems to be a bit of improvement with respect to the flow circulating around the body of the patient. I see some more uh, airflow circulation here. There is still room for improving circulation around the patient, but for now I choose the design 2 over design 1 and I move on to Fluent for more detailed analysis. Fluent is a single window application from meshing to post-processing. Meshing in Fluent is task-based, meaning that Fluent Meshing has a workflow that guides you through completion of meshing and you need to complete the current task before you can move on to the next one. At the left, you can see the workflow that I'm using for creating the mesh for my model. I have already imported the geometry. Next, I'm going to create a surface mesh. For the minimum size, I'm going to assign 5 mm and the maximum size 90 millimeters. And I click on create surface mesh. Next, I move on to describe geometry task. For this task, I need to describe the type of my geometry. The geometry that I have here, it consists of only fluid regions with no voids. So I select the second option and click on describe geometry. Next, I'm going to update the boundaries. You can see all the boundaries that I have in my model. These are basically the name selections that I have created in Discovery Live and they have been transferred into Fluent Meshing. Fluent Meshing gives them some boundary type by default based on the name that I have given them. For example, the inlet is always a velocity inlet. I am happy with the boundary types that Fluent has selected. The only one is the, for the mouth of the patient which by default is a wall. I'm going to change this to a velocity inlet and update boundaries. 
Now I click on Update Regions to create the regions. Next, I complete the Boundary Layers task. I want to have 5 layers with a transition ratio of 0.15. And I want these layers to be applied on all the walls of the fluid regions. I add the boundary layers. Next, I'm going to set the parameters for creating a volume mesh. For this example, I want to create a mesh with polyhedral elements. So I select the option of polyhedral and create volume mesh. Once the volume mesh is created from the console, I can see that it took around 1.5 minutes to generate the mesh. Also, the mesh has a minimum orthogonal quality of 0.07. I'm not very happy with the minimum orthogonal quality that the mesh has. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click and create mesh volume, insert task, improve volume mesh. The cell quality limit is set to 0.15. So when I click on improve volume mesh, fluent meshing going to use some built-in algorithms to improve the minimum orthogonal quality to 0.15. Improve volume mesh task is now finished and I can see that the final minimum orthogonal quality has been increased to 0.15. I'm happy with the quality of the mesh now. So I go back to the graphics and now I can use insert clipping plane to see the mesh inside my domain. Once I'm happy with the mesh, I click on switch to solution. Now in solution mode of Fluent, I set up simulation settings. I start by turning on gravity to take into account the effects of natural convection. From the outline view from models, I turn on the energy equation. The default material for the fluid domain is air with constant density. I change the density model to ideal gas to take into account the variation of the density in the domain. Next, I move on to boundary conditions. For the ventilation inlet, I change the type to mass flow inlet and I assign a mass flow rate of 0.18 kg per second. Also, from thermal tap, I change the total temperature to 20 degrees Celsius. In the first part of the simulation, I assume that the patient doesn't cough and I'm looking at the steady state flow in the room. So for the first part, I change the boundary type of mouth from velocity inlet to wall. And in the second part of the simulation, I change this back to velocity inlet to take into account the airflow coming out of the mouth of the patient because of coughing. Next, I need to assign the heat fluxes of the body of the patient, doctor, and the equipment and light in the room. So for that, from the thermal tap, I set the heat flux to 60 watt per meter square for the doctor. And I'll do the same for the rest of the wall boundaries with heat flux. Next, I initialize using a standard initialization method. And I run the calculation with a time scale factor of 0.01 for 1000 iterations. This will take a few minutes to solve. Once the calculation is done, I will come back with the simulation results. To investigate the results, I start by creating a contour of velocity at a plane that passes through the middle of the room. I adjusted the maximum velocity to 0.3 meter per second so I can identify the regions of low velocity. As we also saw in Discovery Life, at the left of the patient, there is still a region with a low velocity and low circulation. I can look at this further by creating a vector plot. The vector plot also confirms the low circulation at the left of the patient. I am also interested in the thermal comfort of the patient. So from report and surface integrals, I'm going to evaluate the temperature and the velocity around the patient. The velocity around the patient is around 0 0.04 meter per second, and the temperature around the patient is 20.2 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so now let's move on to the last part of this demonstration, which is using discrete phase model or DPM to simulate coughing of the patient. To simulate coughing, I need to change the type of simulation from a steady to transient. Next, from boundary conditions, I'm going to change the type of the mouth zone from wall to velocity inlet. I assign a velocity magnitude of 10 meter per second and click on OK. Next, I'm going to turn on the discrete phase model. Here, I don't need to turn on the interaction with the continuous phase because the airflow rate from coughing and its momentum are negligible compared to the airflow rate inside the room. So we can assume that coughing doesn't affect the general airflow pattern of the room. Next, I click on injections to define the injection of particles from coughing. Next, I click on create. I change the injection type from single to surface. And here I'm going to select the mouth surface zone. I keep the particle type as the default option of inert. I change the material to water. I select the option of inject using face normal direction so that the particle are injected normal to the mouth surface zone boundary. The particles, they have a diameter of 0.31 micrometer with a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. The start time is going to be 0 and stop time 0.5 seconds. The velocity magnitude, I'm going to assign a velocity of magnitude of 10 meter per second. Instead of having one injection, I want to have five injections in order to increase the number of parcels. Given the diameter of the particles and the density of water liquid, I can calculate the total flow rate of each injection, which is approximately equal to 9.9 .9 e minus 12. Next, in turbulent dispersion, I'm going to turn on the discrete random walk model. I click on OK here. So now I need another four injections similar to the injection that I just created. For that, I just simply select the injection and click on copy. And I repeat this to have five injections. Once I'm done, I close the window here. I click on OK. So now my DPM parameters are set. Next, from boundary conditions, I edit the outlet boundary and I make sure that the discrete phase boundary condition type is set to escape. This means that the particles, they can escape the domain from the pressure outlet boundary. Next, I click on one of the walls and from DPM tab, I change the boundary condition type to trap. This means that the particles, they stick to the walls when they hit them. I'll do the same for the rest of the walls. Lastly, before running the calculation, I want to create a report definition by clicking, right clicking on report definition, new, DPM report, escape mass. I want to see how many percentage of the particles they escape from the outlet through the simulation. So I select the outlet boundary here. And for this one, I'm going to create a report file. Then I'm going to run the calculation for 300 seconds with a time step of 0.1 seconds. The calculation is going to take some time. Once the calculation is finished, I'll come back to show you the results. The calculation is finished. You are now watching an animation that shows how the particles spread in the room when the patient coughs. The particles are colored by residence time. You see that after some time, some of the particles leave the room. To better understand what percentage of particles leave the room, I have plotted the percentage of particles escaping from the outlet versus time. As you can see, after around 10 seconds, the particles reach the outlet, and after 300 seconds, 20% of the particles are still in the room. To summarize, in this demo, we saw how to perform a fluid thermal analysis, including force and natural convections in a hospital room using ANSYS Discovery Live and Fluent. We also saw how to use DPM to track particles generated by a patient coughing.
This demo can of course be extended to ventilation in any closed space including your workspace. I hope this demo has given you ideas on how ANSYS can help to make your living and working space a healthier place free from air contaminants. Stay safe and have a nice day.